Hey everyone, Shane here from freetechtutorials.com. I'm here today with your 15th Java tutorial. In this tutorial today, we're going to be talking about nested loops. Uh, more specifically, in this tutorial, we're looking at nested for loops. So we've seen for loops already. We know that a for loop is a great way to run pieces of code over and over again. And today, we're going to be looking at how can we include another loop inside of our loops. So for example, today to illustrate that, we're going to be pretending like we're um, coming up with a secret knock for our friends and family to use when they come over to our house. Kind of a silly example, I know, but I think it's a good illustration. So let's go ahead and create our first for loop here. Just going to do for. We know the structure here. So we'll create our counter variable i. We're going to start that at 1. And we're going to say um, we want our, our first knock to be let's see let's do three knocks so we'll say while well, i is less than or equal to three and we'll do our counter variable and then we're just going to output on our screen what we want um, the knocks to be so let's use a print line statement here and let's say we're going to do a knock to begin with and then we'll do like some taps or something like that after it so we want the first one to be a knock and then We'll go ahead and just fix our spelling error and then go ahead and copy this down. So we're going to do one knock and then we're going to do a couple taps. So let's do, let's say, five taps. Uh, copy that again. All right. So we got two there. And copy that down. Three, four, five. All right, so we've got a for loop here, and it's going to go through and run through this three times, and each time it goes through, it's going to knock, uh, print out knock, tap, 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 so five taps. Let's go ahead and print that and see what it looks like. All right, there we go. So we can see it's knock, tap, 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 blah, 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 and then it does it three times there. So this would work just fine if for some reason, you know, in our silly scenario here that we're creating this program to... Um, give our friends and family member the secret knock to get into our house. Um, this would work just fine. However, as you can see here, we've got a lot of copied code, and that's probably not the best thing for us to do. So instead of ta um, creating this right here and having this print out five, the same line of code five times, us actually having to copy and paste that down or write it out, what we can do is we can put another for loop inside of our for loop we already have created to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of all this right here, and we're going to bring this down. So as of right now, what we're saying is we know that every time our loop runs, as long as our condition statement is true, it does everything between this opening and closing brace. So inside our opening and closing brace for our first for loop, we're going to go ahead and create another for loop. So we'll kind of do the same thing here. Now since we already have, we're already using i as our counter variable in our primary for loop, we have to use a different variable. And usually what you're going to see in a lot of examples if you look online of um, Java and other languages, a lot of people like to use j for some reason as their second counter variable. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're just going to start, actually we'll start j at 1, and we'll say while well, j is less than or equal to 5, we'll go ahead and do 5 taps. We'll just do j plus plus. And open closing curly braces there. And this one we're just going to do the printout. Actually I think we still have it copied. So let's just paste it there. There we go. So here we've got our nested for loop. Now the reason it's called nested for loop is because we've got this for loop is nested inside of this one. So we know that we have the opening curly brace here and the closing one down here for our for loop. So everything from those two points, all of this stuff right here is inside that main for loop. And then we've got this second for loop right here inside of that. So what should happen here is this will evaluate, it'll run this piece of code, it'll come down here and it'll say, hey look, there's another loop here. It'll evaluate the condition and it'll run this loop as many times as it needs to, and it goes back up to this one and if the condition's still true, it'll run this again, run the whole thing over again. So let's go ahead and run this now and let's see if we get the same result. All right, so it looks like we did get the same thing here. So you can kind of see by our output here how this is working. So this runs the first time it says i is equal to 1. Is 1 less than or equal to 3? Yes, it is. So we'll go ahead and do everything in here. So it prints this out, and then it goes to this statement here. It says j is equal to 1. 
Is j less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So it prints this out, and it keeps doing this loop right here until this is no longer true. Once that's no longer true, it comes down here, it sees there's no other code to run, so it goes back up and does this loop again. So you can kind of see that here as you see the knock, the five taps, the new knock, the five taps. So it does three knocks, and after each knock, it does the five taps. So I know it's kind of like not the best example in the world, it's a little silly, but I'm hoping that you can see here the kind of the structure and the way that this works. So this runs, it runs this code right here as many times as it needs to, it goes back up and runs the whole thing over again. And every time it gets to that inner, inner for loop or the nested for loop, it does whatever it needs here until this condition is false before it goes back up to the primary loop. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Stay tuned, next time we are going to do um, more of this nested loops in our next tutorial. I'm just going to give you kind of a different example so you can see it a little more. So make sure to stay tuned, and if you like the tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.